Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalid the Dawn. I remain Shadow Theory 333, your host, and we are on Living Lands, which it occurs to me has pretty much thoroughly replaced Deadlands. It's pretty. I think it's prettier than Deadlands. But yeah, it, it's basically the new Deadlands. Like, it was Deadlands, except for the center was changed. Like, the center was removed, effectively. So this hill right here has no resources. But otherwise, it's basically Deadlands, just with a less brown texture. A greener texture. I kind of like that. Anyway, this map, as you can see, fairly small and fairly cloaky or shield-focused. And interestingly, both players going cloaky. Despite the fact that shields have been kind of dominant in the metagame recently. Both players going cloaky, neither one apparently afraid the other one's going to go jump bots, or confident that if the other one does go jump bots, they can deal with it. I'm fairly certain that's the motivation. I'm honestly not entirely sure. Because I... I find Cloaky as good as ever, but I don't know. Like I said, Jump Bot is the only thing I can think of because the way the Zeus's were, and then they had the Glaive Tick strategy, but no, I guess that both players are going Cloaky. Possibly talked about doing that as a way of simplifying. It looks like there have they have been talking about how to improve Kshatriya's play. So that would make sense because Kshatriya, I mean, they're not a bad player. But Flipstip is, I believe, the current number one. I mean, it's due to inactivity. They're like number four or five if you had... I think if I had everyone who's ever been active ever on the ladder, Flipstip would be number five or number six. That's still really good. But yeah, they're currently number one because they because of the way the inactivity works in ladders. Like seriously, if you don't play, you don't keep your ladder position. That wouldn't make sense. Or, well, it does sort of make sense, but for motivation to play more. So yeah, Flipstip is currently number one because of activity. They're a really good player. So this is possibly one lopsided, but we'll see how it goes. Kshatriya losing quite a lot right at the, off the bat, right out of the gate. It's kind of what Flipsa was talking about with the little comment about rebuilding. This is where Kshatriya is going to have to rebuild. Yeah, three glaives doing quite a lot of damage there. Flipsa. Not quite as vulnerable, this defender in the back, because Kshatra had a defender up in the front, and that was actually out of range of some of the back mexes. So once it, once those glaives got in the shadow of the solar collectors, it, once in the shadow of these solar collectors, there was no problem. But this is going to be tough for Kshatra, the southeast getting hit hard, but it's not going to be as easy. Looks like Flipstuff will lose the glaives. And... Oh no, losing two of the glaives. Not enough. And the Conjurer, will it get out of the way? If Flipstip looks, they will find the Conjurer, but at least the Conjurer managed to escape for now. That's always the tricky part. Trying to escape with those workers, because it's... It's easy to lose your workers, but Conjurers do have the option to kind of go off into the side. To make it harder to find them, and... Shatra has no radar of that area, so... We have the rebuild. Sorry, Flipstep has no radar of the area, so he has a rebuild. Kshatriya also has no radar, which is a bit of a problem. At this point, Kshatriya is not doing especially well. They've managed to rebuild their main base. They've... I guess managed to start getting up some glaives. They're going for warriors instead, though. Getting rid of the glaives with the riot units. Warriors are not a unit you actually see all that often. Like, I found in my... From what I've seen, and in my experience, they're not... I don't know, they're just... They feel almost a little overrated. Like, okay, they're riots, and they're they're mobile, and they're able to do a lot of damage. But they're also really easy to just counter with rockers that you get anyway. And it's almost... It seems almost considered better just to try to get more glaives, and then try to out-micro the glaives. Rather than trying to get a bunch of warriors. Okay, Kshatriya does have radar on this area, which is exactly what they need to have. Still haven't gone to rebuild anything, though. Nothing yet, so we'll see what happens with that eventually, but not right now. Right now is Flipstiff continuing to harass, see what's there, and finding nothing, but it looks like Shatria does actually know sort of the glaze are there? No, they're... Okay, they sort of do. There's a bit of a hole in their radar, but they have enough information they can see what's going on. And Flipstip continue to harass very effectively. And this is why warriors are not considered super popular, because you kind of have to know where your opponent's going to be and predict it. 
Especially kind of true with riot units in general. They can't really move to respond. They kind of have to have already been in the area. Which is probably what makes Stardust so popular, because Stardust is already in the area. You don't have to worry about having to move it, it's just there. But Kshatra with some counter harassment, and this is not looking good though. Flipstep with double the economy of Kshatra, meaning that Kshatra is just, despite this harassment, not really able to put a dent in Flipstep at all. Flipstep's also not accessing, I should point out. Flipstep is using this. They are using the money they have. More harassment coming in. This harassment shouldn't be too successful. Shatra is well aware it's coming in, and... Ooh. Shatra is going to lose their commander, though. Also, at the same time as Flipstep, but they are able to get rid of the Glaive harassment. No real damage. Shatra jumping away, not wanting to deal with Flipstep's commander. Recon commanders are... Where's it, what's it called now? Yeah, Recon commander compared to support commander. That's... The support commander is going to win. It's just going to win. And this is the point where the warrior can't really do much. If the warrior is dead, though, it must be dead. I don't see it at all. No, the warrior is down. We switched into Rocco's, so we're a bit past the raider phase, and this is where warriors would have no use. And Kshatra's commander walking right into a bunch of Rocco's. Okay, almost walking right into it, jumping up. That was not really jumping away. I'm sorry, that was not jumping away, that was jumping straight up. To turn around. I'm not really sure what the motivation there was. It must have been a misclick. And nice harassment attempt by Kshatriya, but unfortunately that Lotus got up just in time. It was pretty much a last second thing. Still, this is... Man, dealing with this. Glaive Rocco combination. I mean, it's hard to really pick what to use. And it looks like Shatra is not picking anything. They are picking to surrender. Okay, well, that was that. Yeah, that basically just came down to being harassed really early on very strongly. And then after that, it was playing catch-up and not really being able to do so. Like, playing catch-up against someone who is who has more experience and skill is able to handle pretty much any situation better when they have the advantage to begin with. I mean, if you're playing someone who's better than you and you get the advantage to start, that's the dream situation so you have some room to screw up because you're going to make mis more mistakes than they are. And so if you have the advantage early on, you have a bit more buffer room. Getting hit like that early on means you have less buffer room and you need more of it, which is really, really hard to deal with. So I can't blame Kshatriya, but yeah, that was that was interesting. So yeah, I guess, I mean, Flipstip's Flip advice was right. And they did rebuild pretty well. They expanded as much as they could, although they were losing a lot, but they they did expand, and they raided as well as they could, but those clutch lotuses, really good timing in the lotuses. Fairly Yeah, they had radar. That's some radar coverage, but I don't know if they had enough to make that. That lotus timing was just... That was just good timing. So anyway, that was that. We'll have another game in a minute or two between Ikens and Svatopluk, who I've really wanted to see for a while, on Titan Duel. That'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned.